Hey, Carl, we got so much to cover this morning. I do want to start with uh, the big news in this nation last week was the Supreme Court of the United States hearing opening arguments on both California's Proposition 8 and on the Defense of Marriage Act. Have you been following this, and what are your early observations? Yeah. Well, I have been following it. Um, You know, (laughs) to make a prognosis on what the Supreme Court is going to do is a very dangerous thing, (laughs) as we have seen in the past. It it, it seems as though the Supreme Court is going to rule something along the lines of uh, of standing, which, without getting into all the technicalities, uh, means that they're they're basically not going to make a... a, um, a definitive ruling for the nation. If they do make a ruling, it looks like they'll make it for California, which of course can set precedent. But uh, well, you know, we're we're bre- we're holding our breath and we're praying because, as as we know, as you, Mike and Nancy, know, along with me and m- most of your listeners, we come from a biblical worldview, and we understand that that once a culture puts its stamp of approval on any aberration of marriage, I mean, whether it's homosexual marriage or whatever, uh, but, but particularly homosexual marriage, because the Bible addresses that specifically. Once, once a culture does that, uh, that culture, I believe, if I understand the Scriptures correctly, comes under the direct judgment of God. You, you, you know, homosexuality has existed for many thousands of years. The existence of homosexuality in a culture is not so much what God brings his judgment on that culture for that I understand the scriptures as much as it is he brings his judgment on the culture when a culture as a whole legalizes it or 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 wraps its arms around it embraces it winks at it and if our supreme court rules that homosexual marriage is equal to marriage between a man and a woman uh, then I, I think our nation is in serious trouble uh, con- concerning the hand of God. What, what do you guys think? Well, I, I agree, Carl. And, you know, let's be clear. There's only one nation on earth that is in a covenant relationship with God, and that is, of course, Israel. But I do believe when a nation like ours back in 1775 said, we are willing to submit to God's laws and God's ways, he is He is uh, true to bless and protect that nation. But I agree with you. When you start saying, okay, God, we've taken it, uh, uh, we can take it from here. I think we're headed for trouble. Nancy, any ideas? Well, there isn't anything new under the sun. This has already been done, as Carl alluded to, in uh, ancient Rome. And when you look at what happened when the emperors like Nero were participating in homosexual marriages, he married two men uh, and even had the bridal veil and everything and even had the marriage bed in front of everybody at the reception. So when you see something like that happening, um, the Roman culture was already on the way down but boy did it fall hard after that Mm -hmm. so you know this isn't the first time that this has happened we have to remember this is not new this is something that's been repeated many times through history and Carl as you said uh, when a culture does this it's like the final death blow right well, you, you know, Mike and Nancy, very well spoken. You're, you're dead on. And, 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 and a couple of other observations. Uh, uh, number one, really all we're talking about here, and I hate to use the word all because it's, it's monumental, but all we're talking about here is changing a definition by law. In other words, marriage. Look it up in the dictionary. Look in the encyclopedia. I mean, look, look in the Bible. Look in any historical reference. The definition of marriage is between a man and a woman. I mean, that's it. That's marriage. So, so what the radical homosexual movement is seeking to do is to change the definition, the basic fundamental definition of a basic and fundamental and foundational institution, which is absolutely mind-boggling. That's like saying from now on we're going to call all dogs, we're going to just call them cats, because we just want to change the definition of what a dog is. Well, but a dog is still a dog and a cat is still a cat. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, a marriage is still a marriage. Uh, a union is still a union. Uh, the, the man's plumbing and a, a, a woman's plumbing are still designed for procreation and, and all of the things that God designed them for, regardless of how we change the definition. So uh, to, to me, the, this, this whole radical homosexual uh, marriage agenda 
is is just it's completely ludicrous and uh and 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 absolutely destructive to a culture carl let's first talk about how this will impact the republic of the united states and then later more importantly uh, christians but you know if the supreme court rules against california uh this could be a death blow to a principle in our constitution called states rights and for our listeners who may not be familiar with the constitution the constitution gives the federal government limited authority and puts much of the law uh and and the right of the law, if you will, into the hands of the states. But Carl, don't you think this would this could be the death blow for states' rights if the Supreme Court overrules the will of the people in California? Well, there's no doubt about that, Mike. I mean, you've nailed it. That's and that's what uh, a major uh, component of this argument um, against the Supreme Court ruling on this is about, and it's about states' rights. Uh, those things that uh, have not been afforded to the federal government through the Constitution belong directly to the states, and and so a lot of people are looking at it from from that angle as well. And and you're right. If the Supreme Court steps in and says, "Look, we don't care what the state wants." in regard to this fundamental, foundational, biblical, historical institution. We, sitting up here in Washington in our black robes, we have decided otherwise. And that's extremely dangerous and very un-American, <laughs> and many would argue unconstitutional. Well, well I have an interesting observation. You uh, and or your listeners eh, may, not, may not agree in whole with me on this. And um, if y'all want to be wrong, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but but here's, here's the thing. You know, where it says, in, I think it's Genesis 6, where it talks about the, uh, the flood, and, and, and it, right before the flood comes, it says that the people were given and taken in marriage. You remember that? Mm-hmm. They were eating, they were drinking, they were giving and taking in marriage. But right up until the day the flood came. And then the flood came. Now, now listen to this. When people look at that, often they think, well, look, there was marriage there, regular marriage, man and women. No. If you read the scriptures before that, God says, and I'm paraphrasing, says everything that man did was perverted. Everything that man did was evil. Everything, whatever the desires of man's heart was, he did it. And the only righteous ones God found before he destroyed everything were eight people. So this given and taken in marriage... I do not believe means that they were having godly marriages and everything was just going on as normal in a godly fashion. I think that's the Bible's way of saying that even marriage itself had been perverted to unthinkable levels, and they were doing it as though it was the norm, and God brought down his crushing hand and destroyed it all. Mm. So I know a lot of people point to that scripture and say, look, there were good things happening. But if you'll read the passages before, you'll discover that, no, everything was perverted. So it gets back to to our first conversation, Mike and Nancy. When you start perverting the covenant of marriage, the first institution that God ordained, God will bring down his hand of judgment. Mm. Do you ever wish that you could more powerfully, succinctly, and accurately speak to the message of your Christian faith and the Word of God? This is the book you need, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. This book has been featured on TBN, Atlanta Live, dozens of radio programs, and hundreds of markets. It was rave-reviewed by the Washington Times, and it was called a must-read book. Considering the times in which we now live, you need this book. Get it today on Amazon.com or the WND Superstore.